Thank you. Mr. Neal, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner, uh, each day 125 Americans are dying from drug-related overdoses, and it's acute in parts of Massachusetts, particularly in the old cities. Many of these victims are succumbing to powerful synthetic drugs like fentanyl, which are, as you and I both know, hundreds of times more potent than heroin. The toll these drugs are taking is alarming and unprecedented, and I joined Pat Tibay recently to offer a bipartisan effort to hopefully stem this growing ep epidemic. Stopping these drugs from coming through the borders, as you know, is a priority. The Synthetics Trafficking and Overdose Prevention Act is designed to stop dangerous synthetic drugs like fentanyl from being shipped through our borders. Specifically, the bill would require shipments from foreign countries through our postal system to provide electronic advanced data, such as who and where it is coming from, who it's going to, where it's going, and what's in it before they cross our borders. Having this information in advance will enable CP CBP to better target potential illegal packages and keep these dangerous drugs from ending up in the hands of drug traffickers who do great harm to our communities. Commissioner, Congress wants to give you the tools to stop these drugs from crossing our borders. Would you agree that this bill perhaps could be very helpful and that there are more tools that you might suggest to us at this moment that can provide better help to get the job done and help fight now, which has become a national issue? Congressman, I really appreciate uh, uh, the effort that members of Congress, and I've participated in three uh, uh, field hearings on heroin and fentanyl issues uh, around the country, so I know, and from Arizona to uh, Massachusetts, so I know that this is a, a significant issue. As you know from some of our reporting, our seizures of fentanyl at the borders, particularly at the ports of entry, have increased dramatically. But we still have, of course, that unknown issue about uh, the fentanyl that is shipped from overseas and comes in through the air cargo. Having a manifest in advance to be able to target rather than just the random selection that, that goes on now, and with the explosion and the increase in, in air cargo, uh, that information would be very helpful, and I'd be happy to continue to work uh, uh, with you and with the members of the uh, members of the committee and the subcommittee uh, to make sure that if there are additional tools needed, you know the difficulties with fentanyl in both trying to detect it, also the dangers to enforcement personnel. Uh, I think fentanyl is a tremendous threat not only to the populace but also to law enforcement personnel. So thank you very much for the work you're doing on that. A colleague recently said, and you can give us perhaps a quick answer. A colleague recently said that if, before fentanyl is treated, that if a dog or a police officer were to sniff it in its rawest form, that it could kill them? Very much so. Uh, that's why we don't train uh, canines uh, because of that. And also the fact that fentanyl, when you look at it in the in the hospice or the, or the hospital setting, uh, the fentanyl patches are absorbed through the skin as very, very powerful painkillers. Uh, so raw fentanyl that comes into contact either through nasal passages or through skin absorption can be very dangerous to personnel. Uh, so the more, and of course the other part is the Department of State working closely with the countries where we know that uh, this is illegally manufactured and then shipped. And we had some success, by the way, on synthetic drugs. Uh, working with the government of China a few years ago when I had a different job in the administration. Uh, but fentanyl, I think, is uh, your recognition of the significant danger uh, that you just mentioned is an important one for us to consider. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Mr. Smith, you're recognized.